Polycrystalline, monocrystalline, topcon, or heterojunction. What are the different types of solar cells and which ones are the most efficient? I'm gonna be answering those questions and teaching you all about the evolution of solar cell technology in today's video. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the different types of solar panels, the different types of solar cells, uh, and their impact on efficiency. Now, there are two main types of solar cells, monocrystalline cells and polycrystalline cells. And when we talk about monocrystalline versus polycrystalline, the, the difference here is, is the solar cell made up of a single silicon crystal? That would be a monocrystalline cell. Or is it made up of several, several silicon crystals that are glued together or adhered together? So that would be a polycrystalline cell. Now, when I first got started in solar back around 2012, there was a pretty significant difference in pricing between polycrystalline solar cells and monocrystalline solar cells. The monocrystalline cells were more expensive. However, they performed with higher efficiency, especially under extreme high heat conditions. Now, recently what we've seen, especially with the drop in solar panel prices generally, is that there's not as much of a price difference between the two if you're talking about finished solar panel purchase price. And so for that reason, most of what we've gone to is just using the mono cells only. Um, the mono cells also tend to look nicer as well. Now, around 2018, half cut solar cells came into fashion. And so instead of using whole solar cells laid out on the solar module surface, uh, they would actually cut each solar cell in half and then have half cells on the surface of the solar panel. And this also came along with what we would call the, the duo module design. And what that means is that essentially the solar panel operated, although it physically was built as a single solar panel, uh, the electron has had two separate paths to flow, one on the top half and one on the bottom half of the panel. So essentially the top half of the panel's performance would not be affected by what, what was happening on the bottom half. So for example, if there was shading on the bottom half of the panel or if the bottom half of the panel got damaged, it would not negatively impact electron flow on the top half. So these half cut cells in the duo module design led to less internal resistance in the solar panel and then therefore higher energy yield. Now I should also mention around this time, the solar panel size standards started to change a little bit. Now it used to be back in the mid 20 teens that a residential solar panel was what we call a standard 60 cell form factor, meaning that you had six cells across, 10 cells down, and that, that six by 10 layout, that was your standard residential size solar panel. But what we saw was the industry was moving towards larger and more powerful solar panels. So we went from 60 cell form factor to 66 cell, then to 72 cell form factor. And then of course, if you're talking about half cells, then that would be your 120 cut half cells, 132 or 144 uh, using half cut cells. Now, most of today's solar panels are actually using a 108 half cut cell design. However, the cells they're using are slightly larger. So it's similar to the, the older 66 cell form factor. Now, another innovation of modern solar panels are bypass diodes. And I know I've gotten a lot of feedback from folks out there wanting me to discuss the issue of bypass diodes and why MLPEs are not as needed quite as badly today as they were say 10 or 12 years ago. Now, when we talk about bypass diodes, essentially what this means is that there are alternate paths that electrons can flow through the solar module in the event that a portion of the solar module is damaged or is affected by shading. Now, back in the old days, all solar cells in the module were connected in series. So if you had an area as small as an eight by 11 sheet of paper with shading on the panel, that could knock the solar panel's performance down by 50% or more. But with modern solar panels with bypass diodes, since there are alternate paths for, for electrons to flow, that same eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper worth of shade on a solar module may only cost you 15 or 20%. And so therefore, module level power electronics like microinverters or DC power optimizers, the performance benefit that you gain from them using today's solar panels are not quite as high as the benefits that were when they first came out back in 2012, 2014 timeframe. 
So I just wanted to make mention of that here. Most modern solar modules, pretty much any solar module that you would buy from a tier one provider on a full service solar install is going to have some, some use of bypass diodes. By the way, if you have a solar power system installed and you are using MLPE, that's module level power electronics, like solar edge optimizers or Enphase microinverters, go ahead and leave a comment down below. We'd like to hear from you and what equipment you installed at your home. Now, another innovation starting right around 2019 were PERC cells. And PERC stands for Passive Emitter Rear Contact Cells. These are mono solar cells that produced six to 12% higher output or higher efficiency compared to a traditional mono solar cell. Now, one of the more recent solar cell innovations is what we call heterojunction technology. And heterojunction technology actually uh, is, is the result of a mixture of crystalline silicon cells and amorphous silicon or thin film silicon. And this new cell design has many, many benefits, including higher efficiency, lower temperature coefficient, which means the panel is going to produce better under extreme high heat conditions. And it has a better aesthetic as well, since you have that thin film layer over your crystalline silicon cells. Now in today's solar panel market, you'll find heterojunction technology in some of the market leading solar panels like the REC Alpha Pure and the Alpha Pure RX. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen our previous video on most efficient solar panels in 2024, make sure you go back and you watch the previous video where we explain the various factors contributing to solar panel efficiency, degradation rate, and temperature coefficient. And then finally, we have the new N-type TopCon solar cells. Now, TopCon stands for Tunnel Oxide Passive Contact, and you're gonna find this technology in the Qcells Qtron solar panel. Uh, by the way, you'll find the Qtron solar panel in our top five solar panel lineup, so go back and watch that video also if you haven't seen it already. Now, some of the benefits of TopCon solar cells are higher efficiency, better low light performance, lower degradation rate, and and bifaciality. And when we talk about bifaciality, what we mean is the solar cell is actually able to produce or to harvest energy both from the top side of the solar panel and from the backside. So if you're using these for ground mount applications where there's a chance you could have sunlight that reflects off the ground and hits the back of the module, Modules that use this TopCon technology can take advantage of harvesting energy on both sides. So this has been a discussion of solar cell technology and which ones are the most efficient. Um, basically, every time we go to a new evolution, we're, we're experiencing increases in, in efficiency. And so solar, just like with any technology, things develop every year. That's part of the reason why we make these videos here to make sure that you can stay up to date with the most current market and product information. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner, if you're in the process of looking at different solar panel options for your home, um, if you need to get a price quote for some of these solar cell technologies uh, for any of the other leading solar panels on the market, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below. You can set up a call with an expert uh, or just use our free online quote tool so you can see how much solar or battery storage costs in your area. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your business or product or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, we can help you do that. Feel free to use the link below to set up a call with our media team so that we can discuss your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you would like to have your business or product or technology introduced to our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us on the link below to set up a call with our media team or email media at solarsurge.net.